just celebrate your presence we just say thank you lord for opportunity for us to uh, minister to one or another via this media right now lord we just want to give you praise because you are the one in charge we say be thou exalted be thou magnified in the mighty name of jesus thank you holy spirit because you are in charge take all the glory in jesus name we pray amen once more i want to welcome every one of you right now all you can do is let's share this video on and on and so that people can join us but let's go straight to the word of god and we're going to pray the essence of tonight is to pray because yesterday i triggered some few things and that forms the basis of our prayer today today i want to be looking at winning strategy winning strategy every one of us want to be a winner but what strategy can we adopt winning strategy exodus chapter 14 where we pick it up yesterday exodus 14 oh thank you holy spirit i feel refreshed exodus 14 hallelujah hallelujah exodus 14 and uh, i look at verse 3 <coughs> for pharaoh we say of the children of israel they are entangled in the land and the wilderness has shot them in exodus 14 verse 3 for pharaoh we say of the children of israel they are entangled in the land and the wilderness has shot them in and we harden pharaoh's heart and he shall follow after them and I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. I like this. And they did so. That the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of the, all his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Why did we allow them to go from serving us? Excuse me. Now I look at Joshua. There's a scripture in Joshua. I think we need to add to whatever we're doing right now. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua 24. Holy Spirit, I give you praise because you are still in charge. Take all the glory. Joshua 24. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise. Joshua 24. And I take verse 6 only. And I brought your father please note this scripture because it's important you're going to need it in prayer note it i brought your fathers out of egypt and ye came unto the sea and the egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horses unto the red sea the egyptians pursued your father pursued all of them unto the Red Sea. Finally, for now, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter number 8. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, yes, Lord. It's getting better. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew 8, if you are there, just let me hear you say I am there. 820, 828. And when he was come to the other side of the country of the Gadasarites, there met him two who possessed with the devil coming out of the tomb. Note it, exceedingly fierce, so that no man might pass that way. No man might pass that way. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Are thou come either to torment us before time? Have you come to torment us before time? time verse 31 so the devil noted the devils besought him saying if thou cast us out suffer us to go away into the heads of swine and he said unto them go and they were come out note it now and the heads and so on let me let me stop there he commanded them to go this night i want to look at the message I have tagged, the winning strategy. Holy Spirit, have your way again. Take all the glory. Do what no man can do. We just give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I began to let us understand yesterday that for the Israelites, we are not in charge for 430 years. And 430 years is not four years. For I mean 430 years. They were not in charge. Who was in charge? The tax master. The tax master over them took over everything. And the tax master became a tax master over them because a deed of assignment 
a deed of assignment exchange hands. How do I know? Abraham, Genesis 15. Abraham, Abraham, your seeds shall be a slave or shall be strangers in a land that is not theirs. Genesis 15 now. That is not theirs. And they shall serve there 400 years. Ladies and gentlemen, if Abraham had appealed that judgment, I believe either it would have been reduced or completely annihilated. I want to say again, sometimes we are product of a carryover of our parents. A product of an agreement that we don't know where it happened. A product of a covenant that we don't know how it happened. A co-product of sometimes a curse that we don't know how it happened. Most people are suffering what they don't know. I can go on and on. Have you not seen nice looking lady, well behaved, marriage is not working. She's been out of one, she's been out of the second one and probably about to leave the third one. Not because she's bad. You know why? There's an agreement to always meet bad people on our way. But ladies and gentlemen, tonight, we're going to have cultivate this winning strategy because enough is enough. That's why we're here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, did you notice that Pharaoh said when they were leaving Egypt, now, after 430 years, they began to cry out. But please note that at 400 years or even before, they could have appealed it. They could have also taken time out to pray, but then they were too comfortable to pray. Because as at that time, Joseph, their brother, was still reigning. And so Joseph gave them the best of the land. Joseph gave them, let me tell you, sometimes those giving us, they are not basically our friends. People that give you all the time, they are not basically your friend. Do I, can I surprise you who your friend is? Your friend is the one who will tell you no. Because telling you no sometimes will make you discover yourself. Most of us have not been able to discover ourselves because we are in comfort zone. We are in a place where anything you need, they give it to you. Don't you think you compare a child, a child that grew up with his parents, everything he or she has, the parent give it to her. And compare it to another one who grew up in the ghetto. Put two of them in a place, you will see one will survive, the other one cannot. What am I trying to say? I am not saying it's not good that whatever we request is not granted. But I'm saying in most cases, sometimes we need someone to look at us straight and say no. And sometimes a no with man cannot be a no with God. A no with man might just be a yes with God. Because the Moses we are talking about, we are going to lure it. We are going to see where his bush was born in. There was no attention. But let me go a little bit further. The Bible says they were in Egypt for 430 years. Winning strategy. But guess what? They had no winning strategy. What did they have? They have slavery strategy. They have slavery mentality. Who is a slave? A slave is someone who needs someone to give him or her before he eats. Who is a slave? A slave is someone who is not in charge of him or herself. Now listen to me. Look, I, 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 I like to talk briefly about America because it's the current thing happening now. Do you know the Americans got their, their they, 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 were, they were free from slavery for 400, uh, for so many years. Let's put it this way now. For so many years. Now get something. Despite they were free, do you know so, most of them were not in charge? They were not in charge because they are not living in the right path in America. I have been to America. Majority of the black, for instance, in New York, where do they live? They live in bronze. Then take a little bit further. You are going to see another place that looks different. I'm talking about winning strategy. Hear me now. Until you define your class, nobody will put you in class. Your mentality will determine your reality. Don't expect somebody. It's once in a while that somebody can say, okay, let me upgrade you. Once in a while, somebody can just say, let me upgrade you. I remember once upon a time, some years back, traveling, and I sat in economy, and the air hostess looked at me and said, sir, can you follow me? And took me straight to the first class. And I discovered that life is different. It was the same plane, but ladies and gentlemen, something else was happening there that was not happening on the other side. So that gave me a winning strategy. That made me to define my class from that day. From that day on, I said to myself, never again. Never again. I realized that the air hostess may not always come to me to tell me, come and change your seat. It may not always do that. So it means that one way or the other, you've got to fight to lift the floor. You've got to fight to lift the floor. Hear me now. It's cooler up there. 
and it's hotter down there. I want you to understand that there is so much enemy when you are down, but there are so much friends when you are up. Because when you are up, everyone wants to be your friend. When you are down, even dogs will look for your trouble. Go and ask, uh, uh, go and ask Lazarus, who was at the poor man's gate. His problem was the dog, because the Bible said the dog came to lick his soul, and he died. The dog came to lick his soul. You know why? He was sharing the dog's ration. He was sharing food with the dogs, and the dogs felt no. This man has been here taking our portion. He has been eating what belonged to us, so the dog needed to eat him as meal. That will not be our portion. Hallelujah. I'm talking about winning strategy. Now, the Israelites at this time, a day came, they began to cry. Why? Their brother Joseph, who was giving them, is dead. No more Joseph. The Bible said, There arose another king in Egypt. You can read it. Exodus 1 and 2. There arose another king in Egypt that knew not Joseph. He didn't know anything about Joseph. And this king was wicked. But guess what? That was the king that made them discover who they were. That was the king that made them pray. That was the king that brought them close to God. Can I tell you some of you? If you are a Christian listening to me, you better thank God for the problem that brought you to Christ. Because sometimes if this thing, if we don't go, some of us don't get to zero level, we don't know if there is God. Go and ask the woman with the issue of blood. It was not the first time she was hearing about Jesus. It was after she was impoverished by that disease or ailment that she said, let me go and try this Jesus. So one way or the other, some of us are going to say thank you to our enemy one day. We're going to say thank you because personally, if it was not the enemy that blew, that, that, that tried to blow me below the bed, maybe I would still be out there right now or probably would have died. But I want you to understand that one way we are going to thank God one day to say, devil, yes, you meant it for evil, but God made it for good. Hallelujah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about winning strategy. So the Israelites, guess what now? One day they began to cry to God. One of the winning strategies, you must learn to take your request to God. Instead of running after man, run after God. When you run after men, you know what? Men will be running away from you. But when you run after God and you are a God chaser and you are able to find God, men will look for you. No matter who you are. No matter where you are. Go and ask John the Baptist. John the Baptist was in the wilderness. Beyond the Jordan. The Bible says Pharisees, Sadducees, the way to do in the society, they were running to him for baptism. So sometimes it's not about location. In most cases, it could be you just locating your God in your given location and God can reallocate your allocation to your location. That is the truth about it. Ladies and gentlemen, John the Baptist was in the wilderness. You know what? They were coming to him to be baptized. He had no message. What was his message? You brother viper who had warned you to... He was pursuing them and yet they were coming. He was pursuing them and yet they were coming. There are some of you listening to me now. You can preach and yet they are not coming. So you can see, it's not about what you know. It's not about how you preach. It's about the connectivity, ability to have discovered where is my location? Where is God wanting me to be? I'm talking about winning strategy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, but I don't want to go much about John the Baptist. Do you know John the Baptist's ministry changed? He died because he changed his location that God didn't give him. One day John said, he heard about Jesus preaching in the city, doing great crusade. He forgot that this, the, he was a forerunner. He, for, he heard that Jesus was preaching. He said, go and ask Jesus, are you he that is to come? That was the downfall now. When you begin to fight your mentor, you will face tormentor. You can't avoid tormentor. Are you he that is to come? Or shall we look for another? Have you forgotten your assignment? What was your assignment? Your assignment was to introduce the forerunner. I mean to introduce Jesus. And you actually did. You said, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. You said, I'm not worthy to untie his sandals. That was when you were a real person. But guess what? Frustration came because he was in prison. And he said, go and ask Jesus. Are you he that is to come? Or shall we look for another? Guess what? He will never have been in prison if he did not take his ministry to the to Herodias Palace, close to the gate of Herodias. He led the wilderness close there and he began to preach village message in the city. That was the end of John the Baptist. I don't want to go into that. But winning strategy is what I'm talking about tonight because God is said to do something new in someone's life. Ladies and gentlemen, the Israelites cried to God because there was someone now who pushed them to the wall. And then they said, come on, who are we? What are we doing here? 
Where come? Let's they began to discover this. Oh wow, we mean you'll be here for 430 years despite this thing. The, 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 the constitution say 400 years. How come we are in extra time of 30 years? For the first time, winning strategy now, they began to cry out. They were no longer crying to man. They were no longer looking for cucumber and onions. They began to cry out to God. Lord, we need help. Lord, we need help. Because they cried out, God raised a Moses. I don't want to go into that deep into that. He raised a Moses for them. And Moses right now, tried when he became, a, of course, he grew up in the palace where he was going to fight against later. Now, having grew up in that palace, did you notice that Moses thought he was an Egyptian? He wanted to rule. He, he, Moses did not have the mind of leading the people out. Moses had the mind of fighting the palace and discomfiting the palace and making Israelites to inherit Egypt. That was his problem. But some way, there was a change because God also said, Lord, this guy is getting too comfortable. God allowed him to enter trouble. And from then, he was driven or he ran into the land of Midian. There he found a lady and the lady took him home. But guess what? When he finally got home, the Bible says Jethro gave him wife. That's the daughter. He gave him accommodation. He gave him a job. And he was content. Genesis Exodus chapter 2 now. We read down to verse, um, read down to verse 22. He was content to dwell with the man. The Bible says he was satisfied. He just felt, I think this is time. This is my final position. What am I trying to say? I'm looking at negative contentment. Negative contentment is not a winning strategy. There are people, when they get to a place, they find food. That is all. When they get to a place, they find that little salary, little this, little that. They get comfortable. They just think, life is all. I'm going to settle here. I'm going to settle here. It grieves me when I see someone writing and saying, uh, my wife gave birth and I have no money to discharge her from hospital. Then I ask myself, who is this person? So he has anointing to pregnant a woman, but he has no anointing to discharge a woman from hospital. That devil is a liar and a mother-in-law. I know what I'm talking about here today. That's not a winning strategy. If you are not ready, if you are not ready for responsibility, Zip up your trouser. Zip it up. Don't release that thing because you will pay for it. Nobody will help you discharge it. Sometimes you begin to wonder what is going on. That's not a winning strategy. A winning strategy. You see someone writing, hey, my house rent has expired. Sometimes one year, between one year, you know you have house rent. You know you will pay. But you know, because of slavery mentality, where when it expires, I will meet this, I will meet that, I will meet this. Then when they disappoint you, that's the end. Then your face look as if God has disappointed you. Winning strategy is not a slavery strategy. I want to go so deep, please, tonight, because I feel we should take time out to pray. Ladies and gentlemen, they, uh, Moses eventually now uh, um, uh, was taking his uh, sheep to the back side of the desert because that's where he knew. That was the same horror that he ran to for the first time. So remember, he, he took Islam there. And he began to take care of them. In between taking care of the lamb. Ladies and gentlemen, the God decided to set the bush on fire. God decided to set his business center on fire. God decided to set it on fire. Because God knows that until I set it on fire, this man will not give me attention. There are times that some of us will feel on fire. There are times that some of us, you are wondering, the thing that used to work is no longer working. You know what? Because God has a better assignment for you. There is a gentleman, there was, there was what I call fire in his business center. How? Because the animal cannot feed on the grass that is burning. That means business closed. And now, in that same scripture, Moses said, now I will turn aside and see why this bush is burning and yet it's not being consumed. I like to read it from there. He said, now I will turn aside. In other words, this bush has been burning. I'm not going to give it attention, but now I am ready to give it attention. Moses said, <laughs> excuse me, chapter, chapter 3 of Exodus. And now Moses kept, verse 1, chapter 3 of Exodus. Now Moses kept the flock of, his, uh, of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Media, and he led the flock to the back side of the desert. Verse 2, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst 
of the bush. Note this now. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. And note it. And the bush was not consumed. Verse 3 is where I'm going. Exodus chapter 3, verse 3 now. And Moses said, now, please underline your Bible now. Now I will turn aside. In other words, the bush may have been burning a long time ago. It is now I have time for it. The bush may have been burning, but now I'm ready to turn aside. Now that they sacked me from work, I'm ready to turn aside. Now that the girl has disappointed me, I am ready to turn aside. Now that the man has chased me out, I'm ready to give God attention. Now that I have an issue of blood for 12 years that is be smelling, now I will give him attention. Sometimes God permits us in our infirmity so that we can give him attention. Because until you give him attention, the world cannot stand attention for you. You have to give God attention. You didn't create yourself, sir. You didn't create yourself, man. You were not just a product of someone that your mother and your father agreed that you were going to come out. You don't even know where you're coming from. But I want you to know that God has planned for you. I'm talking about winning strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, Moses said, now I will turn aside. And when he did, out of the fire came the voice. Some of you listening now, out of the trouble you are going through, there's a voice. Do you know that this coronavirus so-called pandemic that is happening, there's a voice coming out. There is a voice for everybody. If you have not heard your voice, if you have not heard your voice to, to, to fasten your seatbelt, to understand that the world is changing. If you have not heard that something is about to happen, if you have not heard, I want you to understand that it's time for you to go again and hear. And when you hear, what do you do? You have to buckle up. What do you do? You go closer more to God. Because it's no time to backslide, sir, man. I want you to understand. In case you have been, you have been the type, you have been in church, living your life anyhow. Yes, I know you go to church, but you know your life has, your life has left the church. You know. I don't want to go into that so deep, but let me continue on this assignment that God led me tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that is the Moses now because the bush was burning. Who was that bush? The bush was the Israelites. The Israelites bush, the is that bush that was burning were the children of Israelites in Egypt. For 430 years that bush has been burning. For 430 years that bush has been burning. Moses came to that place that bush has been burning. Moses rather lead the flock somewhere else. But that particular area, he will not take the flock there because the bush is burning in that angle. The bush is burning in that angle. I'm not a cattle reeler, but if you ask cattle reeler, what they do is that they take the cattle around the bush. That's the reason why in Nigeria we are having this problem of cattle reelers moving their cattle from one position to the other because sometimes the cattle don't like eating a particular grass. It's like human being. We eat rice, you want to eat a pandemium, like that. So they go around. But I believe that particular area, they, 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 he could not get there. But one day he said to himself, now I will turn aside. Why is this bush burning? And yet, it's not being consumed. You know why? The Israelites have been burning in Egypt for 430 years. They were not being consumed. You know, the grace of God was sufficient for them in the midst of suffering. The grace of God was there. God was keeping them. Some of you listening to me now, you don't know why you survived all you went through. Some of you listening to me now, you know how your life has been. You know where you are coming from. You survived it all. You survived even the coronavirus. You caught it without knowing. You caught it. You survived it. You know why? God had a plan for you. That's a plan for you. I want you to understand that God had a plan for you. Ladies and gentlemen, the bush was burning. And he said, let me give you an attention. So out of the same bush came the voice. Out of the fire came the voice. Out of the trouble came the voice. Out of his fear came the voice. Out of his trauma came the voice. And the voice said, Moses, Moses, I got you. Now you're going to go back to Egypt. You have an unfinished job. If you watch, Moses tried to escape the calling. I don't want to go so deep because I am about to pray. We are about to pray. Please hang on with me briefly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Moses, God is telling him now, go back to that place. Moses said, excuse me, do you know who you want me to go and meet? Sir, I don't know who you are. Who are you? He said, I am that I am. That's the first time. If you read it further, God described himself as I am that I am. What is the word I am? I am was a word or a name that has never been given to anyone. 
in Abraham's time, he knew himself, they knew him as Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha. He knew him as Jehovah. In all his forefathers' time, they knew him as Jehovah. But look at Moses. Moses say, I am. Moses was confused. Excuse me, sir. What is I am? I don't know. What is I am? God was giving him a new revelation, which I call Revelantu. God was giving him new Revelantu for a new assignment he was putting in his hand. He was simply saying, I'm not going to do with you like I did with Abraham. I'm not going to walk with you like I walk with others. I'm going to walk with you in a different way. So he told him, my name is I am that I am. Ah, what is I am that I am? I am that I am I'm simply means if your enemy want to die, I am. If your enemy want to live, I am. If your enemy want to confront you, I am. If your enemy want to die today, I am. If your enemy, ah, God was saying I am. So he could not understand. Is that your name? He said, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, when Moses was still afraid, God said to Moses, what is in your hand? We need strategy. We need strategy now. What is in your hand? There are some of you looking at me now. There's something in your hand you never valued. There's something God positioned in your life. You think it's nothing. So you are looking at the one that is in people's life. You are envious. You are so envious of people. But you never look that God put something in your hand. He said to Moses, what is in your hand? Ah, for the first time he discovered, I have nothing. He said, no, you have something. What do you have? I have a rod. Just a rod. He said, yes, okay, I will show you that there's something in your hand you didn't know. Throw it down. Throw it down, Moses. Come on now. Throw it down. The Bible says... He threw it down and he became a serpent. <laughs> and he ran. He said, Don't run. Don't run. I told you I am. I am. No. Now Moses, come back. Come back. Don't run away. You see, your enemy, I told you, is already on the floor. Because if me and you know the crown on Pharaoh's head is a snake. So Pharaoh was a type of a type of serpentic spirit. He was a type of power that can strike you in the spirit realm. You can sleep and not wake up when you confront Pharaoh. When the Pharaoh spirit is after your life, he just strikes you and you have heart attack. And so Moses ran away and he said, no, stop, don't run, don't run. That is your enemy on the floor. The Pharaoh you are running away from, the Pharaoh you are running away from, that is him on the floor. Pick him up in your hands. Rakata Yabasanda, winning strategy. Discovering what is in your hand. He said, pick it up now. Pick up. up. The Bible says he picked it up. He became a rod again. Wow. Lord, is that me? He said, yes. You are going there now. That is why if you read your Bible, you will realize that each time Moses is going to Pharaoh, he puts the rod in front. Each time Moses is going to see Pharaoh, he puts it in front. Because the fraud was everything to Moses. And that's the reason when God permitted Moses to die, God needed to also bury the rod. Because if not, the Israelites would have forsaken God and they start worshipping the rod. That's why till today, nobody has ever found the rod. That's why when Joshua became the leader, if you read Joshua chapter 1, you will see where God said to him, Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. Get ready, you and these people. Get ready now. You need to cross this Jordan. Get ready to cross this Jordan. Ah, but sir, I don't have a rod. Shut up. You don't have a rod. But you now, I want to do something new with you. Wherever the sole of your feet shall tread upon. I didn't put the rod. I, I put, didn't put the rod in your hand. Because your own feet will do what the rod of Moses did. That means, that means the rod of Moses could dry up the Red Sea. But your own feet will dry up the Jordan. I am going to do a different thing with you. I never did it with anyone. I never did it with your father. I never did it with your mother. But you are a brand new person. A winning strategy make you to know that God has another strategy for you. You have to know that you cannot do things the same way. You cannot do it in your father's way. You have to change. You've got to improve. Uh, I want to go so deep. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why when Joshua got to the brink of George, um, the Jordan, the Bible says as the priest touched, let touch the Jordan, you know what happened? The Jordan dried up. Same way the Red Sea dried up through the rod of Moses. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a winning strategy that God has for every one of us. What do we do in order to have this winning strategy? I don't have time. I'm going to lead us in prayer in a few minutes now. I'm about to pray, please. I'm about to pray. Oh my God, I, I feel this thing. It's so strong on me now. I'm about to pray. We still have about 30 minutes or thereabouts. We, we see, but we're about to pray. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that when Moses finally led the people out of Egypt, what was their problem? Their problem is Egypt did not leave them. 
They left Egypt, but Egypt was inside of them. I always say, and hear me now, anytime you have an unction, you'll be living in poverty, but you have an unction that God is about to do something, and you are moving from one accommodation probably to your promised land. You know what you do? Forget your washing bucket behind. Because in your promised land, there's a washing machine. You've got to understand there's a washing machine. Don't carry those junk. Don't carry those junk mattress. Don't carry those broken down, dilapidated chairs. You know why? There is a next level for you. There's a jacuzzi waiting for you. You've got to understand that God has something great ahead of you. If you can't see it, you can't assess it. It is what you see, you assess. I want to get ready to pray. Ladies and gentlemen, Moses finally left them, let them. But what was the problem? When they were leaving, Pharaoh said, these people are leaving, they have gone. They said they are gone. Because he was the one that said they should go. He just woke up to realize that they were gone. He said, what? They have left. He said, yes. Don't worry. The wilderness will shut them in. Exodus 14 verse 3. The wilderness will close them in. The wilderness will entangle them. They will never make it. Who is it that swore behind you that you will not make it? Who is it that said your mother's children cannot make it? Who is it that said your father's children cannot make it? Who is it that said people in Nigeria will die of coronavirus? Who is it that said it? Hear me now. Who is it that said it and it coming to pass when Jehovah God said it not? That devil is a liar. That thing is going back to sender. People have suffered enough. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know as I'm talking, he said, have they gone? He said, yes, they will not go far. And some of you listening to me, winning strategy is not for you to cry when you know what your enemy says. Winning strategy is not for you to cry or for you to begin to mourn and begin to look at yourself. Winning strategy is for you to brace up and tell yourself the devil is a liar. Shake the beast into the fire and tell yourself, self, I am going to disappoint my enemy. I will not give them the joy of saying, I said it. I said it. Pharaoh said they will not go far. Pharaoh said the wilderness will entangle them. Actually, they were entangled in the wilderness. That devil is a liar. That generation were entangled. Why were they entangled? Number one, a word was spoken behind them. Number two, Pharaoh was a type of principality. Number three, they cooperated with what Pharaoh said, which was a script. How? How did they cooperate? Moses, Moses, why did you give us only manna? Only manna we eat. I defined manna to us last time. I said manna means what is this? <laughs> manna simply means what is this? Now, it means that if you like to eat rice, while you are chewing manna, have the mentality of rice. You'll be feeling rice in your mouth. If you feel like eating maybe um, the cucumber, all you need to do is to have cucumber in your mind, you begin to taste it. That is the meaning of manna. But guess what? They were complaining when God gave them manna. It was not the fault of God. It's your mentality that will determine your reality. If they had tuned their frequency and their mind to Kokumba, they would have been tasting Kokumba. So there was no need to ask Moses, is, where is the Kokumba we ate freely in Egypt? That was part of the thing. Sometimes we blame God for what we fail to do. We blame God for what we fail to do. We blame our pastors for what we fail to do. We blame our parents for what we fail to do. Ladies and gentlemen, take responsibility. That is one of winning strategy. Take responsibility. Take it. Ladies and gentlemen, as I bring this into a close before we pray, time will not permit me. The scripture we read just now in Joshua chapter 24 verse 6. Uh -huh. He says, uh, you know what he did? He said, and they pursued my fathers. He said, your father, they pursued your father in the Red Sea. They pursued your father. That means you also pursued your mother. Now, hear me again. Whatever pursued your father, you can disgrace it. Whatever pursued your mother, you can disgrace it. With a winning strategy, you can, be, you can also pursue them. You are anointed to pursue your pursuer. I'm tired of seeing people. I am packing out of this compound because there are witches. Why can't witches pack out because of you? I'm tired of being in Nigeria. I have to go to America because there are witches. Don't you think there are witches in America? Don't you think that if you don't deal with the witch here in Nigeria, you know what they will do? The witch will exchange your case file with the witches in America. They will exchange your case file and 
say this is the case file of our passenger here in Nigeria. Do you have any passenger here we help you deal with? And there will be a exchange of case file. So you see that the problem you have now, you now have international problem. That one you had before was a local one. Then you now begin to deal with international problem. I don't want to go so deep into this this night because there's something that I'm feeling here. I just know that someone here hearing me, God is about to liberate you. I believe God is about to take you to next level. But you've got to know what pursued your father. You've got to know that your father was a lazy man. You've got to know that your father was a man chasing women around town. You've got to know that your father was a polygamist. You've got to know, you've got to know. You've got to know, you've got to know that your mother was a troublemaker. You've got to know that your mother was never contented. You've got to know what is it that pursued my father? What pursued my mother? By the time you know, then you have a winning strategy already. Ah, I feel like praying tonight. That devil is a liar. He is a big liar. There's something great that God is just set to do in someone's life. We are not going to permit the devil. You see, I told the government, I told people, I said the government should listen. Now, if you want coronavirus to leave this earth, allow churches to meet. You know why? Because we can fire coronavirus. There is a missile in our mouth. There's something we can fire. If Ebola came now to Nigeria, it didn't work. They brought Ebola, but we sent it back. But what was the strategy we used? But now, we forgot that strategy. So winning strategy uh, is part of it is your prayer life. Your prayer life. Your prayer life is going to be alive. If you don't pray, the enemy can pray on you. So you've got to understand. Another thing is that you've got to learn to discover to recover. When you discover, have a mentality of recovery. Not just looking at, I bind the devil. I bind witches. If witches are bound, devil is bound, and you fail, you are a fool. You are a, what I call, M-U-U, M-U-U. You know what? There was no need binding the devil. There was no need binding whatever. Because, you know what? The thing that will bind the devil more is your success. Resort, cancel insults. I'm not saying, yeah, we bind. But what I mean is that if you spend your time to pray, spend your time to bind, then you spend the day sleeping. You're already a failure without knowing. You do an all night. You, you, they take you sometimes. Some of you do all night on Saturday. Then you get you sleep on Sunday. You are not going to say, no, I, I did all night. I want to sleep. The Bible says, iron sharpened iron. Just imagine me and you. See the way you are feeling as I'm preaching now. Just imagine all of us being in the same hall and think of how this thing will be a meeting to you, a meeting to you if you tune to the frequency. Of course, there are people who enter church, they fall asleep. There are people who enter church, their mind has left church. And I just pray that they will use this coronavirus season to come back to Christ so that you can avoid the coming crisis. Hallelujah. Time will not permit me. Holy Spirit, thank you. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I will take this message again. I'm going to take it on series. I will take it again because there's something that God is leading me here to do. But I, I just, there's something. I'm going to take this winning strategy for some time. But for now, let us spend time to pray. The devil is a liar. I'm going to lead you in some powerful and corrosive prayer right now so that we can take time out to pray. Hallelujah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. First and foremost, I want to pray with the book of uh, Job. First, first, let's give God thanks for what you have heard. Thank him for your life. Thank him for your life. That you are positioned to hear such message tonight. Give him thanks for your life, sir. Give him thanks for your life, man. You are not a failure. Nobody should conclude you a failure. I'm talking to you here. If you have not failed, listen to me. If you didn't fail here, you cannot fail there. The first way to fail is to fail here. Your mentality determines your reality. Have a winning mind. Re release people from your hearts. Forgive those you need to forgive. Succeed. When you succeed, those who will commit suicide will commit suicide. Succeed. Very important. Have Christ. Have God. Carry him along. Don't abandon God. Don't say, well, I'm going after this. I'm going after that. Go and ask your father how you work hard, but nothing to show. We want to go into prayer right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just give you praise. I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Now, first of prayer, we prayed it last time. He said, Pharaoh, we say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. You are going to pray any entanglement in my next level. There are people that have got into next level, they got entangled. Because after a next level, there's another level. But some got to next level, they could not make it out there because they have been entangled. What do I mean? There are people that right now, just a car, they were entangled. Just one car. Just having one car, they are already entangled. They are backslidden. There are some also that just one accommodation, just one job, 
One relationship they enter, they are already entangled. A relationship I made them to abandon God. You are going to pray for yourself right now. That Lord, in my next level, there shall be no entanglement. Any trap. The entanglement happens when there's a trap. A trap. When you put a trap and the animal enter, the animal is entangled. Look at a web. A cob web. Is it a spider? Put a, a web. And, and a, 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 a butterfly is trying to fly through that cobweb or there about it gets entangled and you know what is what the spider does it quickly entangles them all and sniff life out of the butterfly so you're going to pray lord any entanglement in my next level because what i'm seeing i'm seeing the next level already we have conquered this level we are seeing the next level so you're going to pray lord any entanglement in my next level in the name of jesus i overcome you by the blood come on make it your prayer right now rakuta yabaranda azagudi arakato Lord, any entanglement in my next level, in the name of I plead the blood of Jesus. Any entanglement in my next level, I overcome by the blood. I overcome by the blood. Any entanglement that the enemy has planned for me and my family, me and my members, me and what God has given me, Lord, we overcome by the blood. I overcome by the blood. I bind that devil. I bind that power. Any power waiting to bring shame to my life, waiting to bring shame to our life. In the name of Jesus, we command it to scatter. We command it to scatter. Shakuri Akasanda, Alakata Barugada, Ezegede Baragada, Anduri Agazende, in the room, Sunday. Hey, Lord, in the name of Jesus, any entanglement in my next level, I will not be lost in my next level. I will not be entangled in my next level. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace to soar higher. I receive grace for next level. I receive grace for next dimension. Ashuto, Iraka, Azekete, Irakutayanda, Irababa, Sende, Irakurianda, Yamaseke. Yes, Lord. Breaking forth on every side. Breaking through on every side. I give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. We overcome by the blood, even the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Your next prayer, you are going to pray. He said, he said it. You are going to pray against enchantment and divination. That any enchantment, any divination, anybody that spoke any word, either in the midnight or early morning, before you were born or after you were born, he placed a particular part of the world and spoke a word against your family and your family has been going through it. You are going to say enough is enough. Winning strategy. Knowing now. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, open your mouth and begin to pray that any enchantment, any divination against my life, against your life, let it begin to expire. Ashanturi Akasando, Iragada Bakasende, any enchantment, any divination against our lives, we command you right now, expire, 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 expire. Any enchantment, any divination against my children, expire. For those that God has given to me, we are for signs and we are for wonders. Arato Yakasende, Irabosende, Libakatayando, Elakataramasende. Yes, Lord, any enchantment begin to expire right now. You are not my portion. I overcome you by the blood. Enchantment, divination, any word spoken behind me, any word spoken around me, any contrary word from the enemy's camp against our life, backfire now. Backfire now. Go back to sender. Rakuta Yaba Sende. A regede barunda yaba. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, I was praying that God just led me to this scripture and I found it. It's in Job 30, verse 15. Job 30, verse 15. He said, Terror turned upon me and they pursued my soul as the wind. They pursued my soul as the wind. You are going to pray, Father, every stubborn pursuer. Any stubborn pursuer. Hear me now. Being in America is not an escape route. Being in Jamaica is not an escape route. Being in Australia is not an escape route. Being in Nigeria is not an escape route. What is the escape route? Bind the bindable and lose the losable. You are going to pray. Every stubborn pursuer that swore to pursue me forever. Every stubborn pursuer that make me their problem. Father, in the name of Jesus, we silence them by the blood. Open your mouth and make it your prayer. Lord, we come against stubborn pursuer. Aratuli akasando. Alakuta lakata yaba. Iragadaba kusande. Eratuli yaba. Yes, Lord. Every stubborn pursuer, we come against you. We plead the blood. Even the blood of Jesus. Manuna rana sanda. Alakuri akasonde. Hey, legende yemase. Yes, Lord. Every stubborn pursuer, we overcome you. We overcome you. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. The blood of Jesus is against you. Thank you, Holy Ghost, because you hear me always. In Jesus' name we pray. Joshua chapter 23, or 24, I mean. Joshua 24, verse 6. I still pray again. Joshua 24, verse 6. Um, I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and ye came unto the sea. And the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horses unto 
you are going to pray anything that pursue my father anything that pursue my mother any demon that pursue my parents any contrary power that pursue me from now be blind concerning me open your mouth and make it your prayer every power every transference from generation to generation that pursued my father that pursued my mother that pursued those behind that pursued those before us we plead the blood of jesus against you arutayaba azukorikata izaguda yaku ilakata lamoseke lord we plead the blood of jesus against stubborn pursuers we plead the blood of jesus against stubborn pursuers we plead the blood of jesus we bind their power arunta arika arekete baronda any pursue any power that pursue my father, that pursue my mother, that pursue those before me. I say enough is enough. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. Remember the word of God say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Ah, it shall no longer be said that the fathers have eaten sour grape, that the children's teeth are set on edge. I will not suffer what my parents did. I will not suffer the sin of my parents. In the name of Jesus, I overcome you by the blood. Aru katayama, ezekeri mamama, indayama sende, rebo sende, Make it your prayer. Make it your prayer. Shaturi Akasende. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Next one. Any sworn enemy. Any sworn enemy that has vowed to waste my life. Ah, I can go on. Acts chapter 23, the Bible says some group of people bound themselves under a curse. They said they will not eat or drink until they keep on. Any sworn enemy. Acts chapter 23. You can read it when you get home. Now, let's get, we are going to pray. Any sworn enemy that has vowed to waste my life. In the name of Jesus, I command you to begin to fight against yourselves. Let God trouble my troublers, that my troublers will not remember to trouble me. Open your mouth and make it your prayer. Father, let trouble enter the camp of my enemy. In the name of Jesus, let trouble enter the camp of my enemy, that they will not remember to trouble me. I want you to pray that prayer. Hold on now. Let me, let me tell you why you need to pray while prayer. You know, at a time, King Saul was pursuing uh, David. Do you know that David got to a place, I think in Kela or there about, he got to a place and David was there. King Saul was just about catching him. About, he had laid the trap already, about to catch David. Suddenly, a news came from his home that his home was in on fire. A news came that his home was not in order. You know what he did? He, thought, he was just this close to catching David. God allowed trouble in his family that made him did not catch Moses, uh, David. So you're going to pray that Lord let my troublers enter trouble that they will not remember to trouble me. Make it your prayer. Join me to pray that prayer. Father, let my troublers enter trouble that they will not remember to trouble me. Any contrary power, we overcome you now. By the blood of Jesus, we overcome you. Any contrary power, any troublers of our soul, in the name of Jesus, enter trouble that you will not remember to trouble us. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. Even the blood of Jesus, we disarm you. We disarm you. We disarm you. Am you with this? Am you Shaturi Akasande Elekete Barunda Yaba Iramama Sende in Jesus' mighty name? We pray, Amen. You're gonna pray, let affliction from the enemy backfire against them. Any power carrying affliction, a, a lady confessed one day she was carrying leprosy to someone on the way, Holy Ghost caught her and she fell, she became a leper and she began to confess. You're going to pray, any power. Any power carrying evil thing to me, any contrary power carrying affliction to my life, in the name of Jesus, I command that affliction backfire against your owner. Make it your prayer. Backfire against your owner. You spirit of affliction, uh, in the name of Jesus, walk against yourself. Walk against yourself. Walk against yourself. Backfire against them. Shaku talakata. Azuko Tolia, Izaguda, Ali Kato, Ezekete, Ibrakatalando, Enelemose. Yes, Lord. Backfire, 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 backfire. Go back to sender. You are not my portion. I plead the blood, even the blood of Jesus against you. You will not stop me. I am unstoppable. I am unkillable. In the name of Jesus. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. Shaturi Kasande. Elekete Barunda ya. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed time will not permit me i think we've got to uh, try to close this service here so that we can um take the communion right now the communion right now but first another prayer before that you're going to pray listen to me the bible says when jesus got to the Gennesaret, what happened they met him too with possessed with the devils they met him too possessed with the devils i want you to pray again that any contrary power waiting to bring shame to my life any power that want to send me back. There are people that get promoted, they get demoted. There are people that go forward, they go backward. 
There are people that travel, they throw them back. There are people that marry, they remain unmarried. There are people that went up, but they are down right now. They are going to pray. Any power that want to chase me back for my promotion. Any contrary power, be blind concerning me. Open your mouth and make it your prayer. In the name of Jesus, contrary power, we say be blind. Concerning us, be blind. Concerning us, be blind. We plead the blood of Jesus. Rabu shata kalaba. Ere katurianda. Izakuta. Labu rakate. Ilakuta yaka. Azekete barukato. Irakakakabalo. Elanturi akasondo. Iragadaba. Izekete. Elakuri akasande. Elakota yaba. Ibrakata loko. Ezanturi akasote. Irakata masote reba. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I overcome you. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of Jesus, we overcome. We overcome you. We overcome you. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus. We overcome you by the blood. Even the blood of Jesus. Thank you because I'm a winner. Thank you because we are the head and not the tail. Thank you because we are above and not beneath. Thank you because we are waxing stronger. Even on every side. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you hear us always. In Jesus' name. So these demons, what did they do? The Bible said they bow to Jesus. You are going to pray. I command every contrary power to bow to me. You know why? There are no two dominions in the same place. There's always one dominion. And God has given us dominion. So no power from hell is permitted to have dominion where you are there. So you are going to pray. In the name of Jesus, every contrary power. Every contrary power. We command you to bow. We command you to bow. The Bible said they bow to Jesus. Lord, we command them to bow. They will not send me back. They are bowing right now. We command them to bow. We say let them 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 bow. Bow, 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 bow. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, because you hear me always. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Now, one of the winning strategies, you have to say good things. You have to prophesy good things over yourself. Now, let's do that. We're going to say, I'm the head, I'm not the tail, I'm above, I'm not the net. Wax is stronger on every side. Open your mouth and say it right now. The Lord has blessed me. It's irreversible. In the name of Jesus, going higher every day. I'm not going under, I'm going higher. I'm the head, I'm not the tail, I'm above, I'm not the net. In the name of Jesus, in the name that is above every other name, the Lord has blessed me. And no power can unmake it. In the name that is above every other name, God has made me the head. I refuse to be the tail. I bind every contrary power that want to bring me backward. I command them bow in the name of Jesus. Yes, from henceforth, I have a winning strategy. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. I am above. I'm not beneath. I'm going higher every day. In the name that is above every other name, the hand of the Lord is upon my life. Shaturi Akasande, Ere Katulake, Izagadaba Lande, Era Kutaye, Azuntori Kada, Elegede Uziga, Alukarunda Yaba, Ibragadalande, Elunta Yakase, Elekete Barunda Ya. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, because you hear me always. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Get out your communion material if you have it. We're going to take communion right now. I'm right. I want to make sure I walk within my time. My time. I want to walk within my time. So if you have not done that, please do it now. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Get out your communion material as we go to God in prayer in, immediately. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost, because you hear me always. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> amen and amen. Oh, thank you, Father. We give you praise. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. One of the winning strategy is the power in the communion. Because on that night, when they took communion, can I tell you this here? Egypt could no longer stop them. Egypt needed to beg them to enter their next level. Egypt could not stop them. I don't know the Egypt right now that is plaguing the whole world. They can't stop us. No plague can stop us. It can't. So get out your communion material, you and your family right now, wherever you are. Wherever you are, get it out, get it out, get it out. As we go to God in prayer right now. As we go to God in prayer. So lift it up where you are. Declare over what you're holding. Anything you hold, bread, biscuit, whatever, just get it, just get a piece of it and lift it up to God in heaven. And so Father, say Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare whatever point of contact in your people's hand right now. I speak the blessings of God over it. In the name that is above every other name. By this right now, let the sick be healed. Let the bound be free. Let the enemy pursuing us, let them suddenly turn back. Let the enemy hear bad news that will make them leave us alone. Let the enemy enter trouble that they will not remember to trouble us. As we lift up this communion, Lord, right now, we use that point of contact also to pray for those who are sick. Even those that did not even know about this right now. Lord, 
the blood of Jesus still have potency to heal because the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. And so right now, every yoke of coronavirus, every yoke of sickness, malaria, fever, typhoid fever, whatever, we command it to expire in the name of Jesus. In the name that is above every other name, someone right now that is with me, you are listening to me, you have been down. From now onward, I command healing to spring forth in your body. In the name of Jesus. You that could not sleep well, receive grace to sleep right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak favor, we speak healing, we speak healing. We speak protection, we speak provision, we speak promotion over this communion right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Every generational curse that is following you, we command it to be nullified in the name of Jesus. Any sports stubborn pursuer that pursued your parents, we command it to turn back consigning us in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood 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 of Jesus. Jesus said, he that does not eat my flesh and drink my blood has no life in him. Lord, right now we receive your life into our life. We receive the Zoe life into our life. Thank you, King of Glory, because you hear us always. I speak the blessings of God. I speak healing. After they took it in Egypt, they left labor. They entered favor. And so right now, I declare favor. Favor to recover. Favor to go higher. Favor for next dimension. We receive it right now. I bless it in Jesus' name as we eat in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. 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 In the same way, we lift it up. When they took it in Egypt, when the, blood, when the, ram, when the lamb was, was killed in Egypt, he told them, he said, put the blood on the door cell. He said, take it and get ready to go to next level. And the word Exodus started. And so, Lord, right now, I lift up this communion which is the blood of Jesus. We speak healing. We speak restoration. We speak favor. We speak promotion. In the name of Jesus, I declare it is well with every one of us. Thank you, Father. The sick is healed. The bound is free. In the name that is above every other name, we command healing to those that are sick. Those frontline workers that are working night the clock to making sure that people don't die. Lord, we declare they will not die. Lord, keep them. Lord, preserve them. Lord, preserve them. Everyone walking around the clock to make sure these things work together for good. Lord, let things work together for good for them. Lord, we also say at this hour, every hidden agenda of the enemy, making the world to suffer, Lord, expose it. By the blood of Jesus, bring, expose it. Take all the glory because there's restoration to nations right now. We bless it in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. And I drink.